Hi guys, so we're starting our new themed week and our theme is unique, as in you are special, you are unique. All of these books are going to be empowering and make you feel like you can do anything and see that you truly are special. So today's story, ironically enough, is called You Are Special. It's by Max Licato. It's one of our favorites. We have a big book and a little book version. <laughs> That's how much we like it. You Are Special, illustrations by Sergio Martinez, written by Max Licato. The Wemmicks were small wooden people. All of the wooden people were carved by a woodworker named Eli. His workshop sat on a hill overlooking their village. Each Wemmick was different. Some had big noses, others had large eyes, some were tall and others were short. Some wore hats, others wore coats but all were made by the same carver and all lived in the village. And all day, every day, the Wemmicks did the same thing. They gave each other stickers. Each Wemmick had a box of golden star stickers and a box of gray dot stickers. Up and down the street, all over the city, people spent their days sticking stars or dots on one another. The pretty ones, those with smooth wood and fine paint, always got stars. But if the wood was rough or the paint chipped, the Wemmicks gave dots. The talented ones got stars too. Some could lift big sticks high above their heads or jump over tall boxes. Still others knew big words or could sing pretty songs. Everyone gave them stars. Some Wemmicks had stars all over them. Every time they got a star, it made them feel so good. It made them want to do something else to get another star. Others, though, could do little. They got dots. <laughs> Punchinello was one of these. He tried to jump high like the others, but he always fell. And when he fell, the others would gather around and give him dots. Sometimes when he fell, his wood got scratched. So the people would give him more dots. Then, when he would try to explain why he fell, he would say something silly and the Wemmicks would give him more dots. After a while, he had so many dots that he didn't want to go outside. He was afraid he would do something dumb, such as forget his hat or step in the water. And then people would give him another dot. In fact, he had so many gray dots that some people would come up and give him one for no reason at all. He deserves lots of dots, the wooden people would agree with one another. He's not a good wooden person. After a while, Punchinello believed them. I'm not a good Wemmick, he would say. The few times he went outside, he hung around other Wemmicks who had lots of dots. He felt better around them. One day, he met a Wemmick who was unlike any he'd ever seen. She had no dots or stars. She was just wooden. Her name was Lucia. It wasn't that people didn't try to give her stickers. It's just that the stickers didn't stick. Some of the Wemmicks admired Lucia for having no dots, so they would run up and give her a star, but it would fall off. Others would look down on her for having no stars, so they would give her a dot, but it wouldn't stay either. That's the way I want to be, thought Punchinello. I don't want anyone's marks. So he asked the stickerless Wemmick how she did it. It's easy, Lucia replied. Every day I go see Eli. Eli? Yes, Eli, the woodcarver. I sit in the workshop with him. Why? Why don't you find out for yourself? Go up the hill. He's there. And with that, the Wemmick who had no stickers turned and skipped away. But will he want to see me? Punchinello cried out. Lucia didn't hear. So Punchinello went home. He sat near a window and watched the wooden people as they scurried around giving each other stars and dots. It's not right, he said to himself, and he decided to go see Eli. 
He walked up the narrow path to the top of the hill and stepped into the big shop. His wooden eyes widened at the sight of everything. The stool was as tall as he was. He had to stretch up on his tiptoes to see the top of the workbench. A hammer was as long as his arm. Punchinello swallowed hard. I'm not staying here, and he turned to leave. Then he heard his name. Punchinello? The voice was deep and strong. Punchinello stopped. Punchinello, how good to see you. Come and let me have a look at you. Punchinello turned slowly and looked at the large bearded craftsman. You know my name? The little wimmick asked. Well, of course I do. I made you. Eli stooped down and picked him up and set him on the bench. Hmm, the maker spoke thoughtfully as he looked at the gray dots. Looks like you've been, been, been given some bad marks. I didn't mean to, Eli. I really tried hard. Oh, you don't have to defend yourself to me, child. I don't care what the other Wimmicks think of you. You don't? No, and you shouldn't either. Who are they to give stars or dots? They're Wimmicks just like you. What they think doesn't matter, Punchinello. All that matters is what I think, and I think you are pretty special. Punchinello laughed. Me? Special? Why? I can't walk fast. I can't jump. My paint is clean. Why do I matter to you? Eli looked at Punchinello, put his hands on those small wooden shoulders, and spoke very slowly. Because you're mine. That's why you matter to me. Punchinello had never had anyone look at him like this, much less his maker. He didn't know what to say. Every day I've been hoping you'd come, Eli explained. I came because I met someone who had no marks, said Punchinello. I know, she told me about you. Why don't the stickers stick on her? The maker spoke softly because she has decided that what I think is more important than what they think. The stickers only stick if you let them. What? The stickers only stick if they matter to you. The more you trust my love, the less you care about their stickers. I'm not sure I understand. Eli smiled. You will, but it will take time. You've got a lot of marks. For now, just come see me every day and let me remind you how much I care. Eli lifted Punchinello off the bench and set him on the ground. Remember, Eli said as the Wemmick walked out the door, you are special because I made you and I don't make mistakes. Punchinello didn't stop, but in his heart he thought, I think he really means it. And when he did, a dot fell to the ground. The end. <laughs> So that's a really wonderful story. I hope you guys see the moral of it. But today, I'm encouraging you, I don't know if you noticed, but in the pictures, all of the little Wimmicks are like little wooden people. They kind of look like puppets. So today, your challenge is to make your very own marionette puppets. You can make them out of all sorts of things. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Pretty much the main rule is that there has to be something to operate it from the top. You can use a popsicle stick or a straw and just tie your string to that. You can make it into an X if you want to be able to operate four parts of them. Are you playing peekaboo? Or if you want to be able to just move their arms, then you can just keep it as one stick. You can make something simple like a caterpillar that's inching around, or you can make a whole person whose arms and legs move. You can make a dog. You can make it out of recyclables. You can make it out of hard pasta. Pasta shells go really nicely around the string to make it so you can operate them. Straws are also good. We have lots of straws, so that's probably what we'll use. But hopefully you guys will be able to find a cool way to make your very own marionette puppets today. And we will see you tomorrow for another special story. Say bye-bye.